Hello folks, I am Ed Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. Currently, uh, we are live uh, outside uh, uh, imaging the sun, so uh, let's head on over there. Okie doke. And here we are. Uh, this is probably where I'm going to end up uh, imaging uh, because there's some pretty remarkable sunspots right here and a nice filament. Plus, uh, if I overexpose the sun, there's a, uh, let me do that. Uh, you can see the rough edges of some solar activity. And this is a pretty good size solar flare. You could probably fit about 10, 15 Earth-sized planets inside that. Uh, so that's a uh, that's big-time stuff. I want to uh, read, or I want to check that frame out though, uh, because I may it's subject to change. But uh, that's where I probably will end up. I have already uh, kind of moved around the sun to see what else is going on. So I'll take you on that same trip now. And let's move the sun up and uh, go down in so doing. I'll probably drive you crazy because I'm going to go from overexposure to uh, all, uh, back to uh, a normal exposure. I want to see what's on the rim. So I'm going to bring this up here. So that's pretty impressive stuff going on, and I want to image that along with, I want to image what's going on here. So, tell you what, let's just uh, move around the rim looking at uh, the sun, and then we'll do another trip around looking at the uh, overexposed Let's move east. There's a nice filament over in here. About to enter the picture. And let's move uh, west just a little bit. No, 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 no. Let's uh, move south just a little bit and see uh, more towards the center of the sun. Yeah, a little overexposed. Just bring this down some. All right, now we'll move um, I'm going to change the speed to uh, eight times sidereal and we'll move a little quicker. Just navigating around the sun to see what's going on. Oh, that's a nice, wicked filament. Wow. When you see these hot spots, I have my camera tilted to combat Newton rings. And even though I have it taped around there, I get light leaks. And uh, so that's what causes that. But it does not show up when I take an image. It exposes evenly uh, across the, uh, the frame. 
it's just when you're viewing it. Okay, let's move down. Move the sun down. It really, the overexposure gets really bad when I'm on this side of the sun, too. Oh, there's some nice sunspots. Let's move those over uh, some. Where we can. Other way, by the way, other way, Ed. <clears throat> yeah, those are some doozies. Now the sun will rotate from left to right, so they'll be moving across the uh, plane. Hmm. Well, let's continue our trip. There's that filament we were looking at a while ago. is be nice to get uh, we're back kind of where we started from so let's uh, run the exposure up to about 30 milliseconds uh, we're going to go up to let's run it up to about 20 milliseconds and let's bring the gain up until we see some surface that's good Maybe a little more. So we're at, let's say, 170. So we'll go to 170 and 25. No, no, no. Back to 20. Okay, no. now let's move around the sun and uh, see what's going on the rim of the sun. So there's those uh, very active flares on the rim. It's on the north west side, northeast side. Ooh, wow. That's a that's a nice one. Uh, hmm. Let's go down. I wonder if I could get both uh, let's see what the, let's go back to 100 and 7.5. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's just not a lot of activity on the surface of the sun to make a picture. What I would like to have is this flaring activity along, we're going to do both, and a lot of, uh, you know, a couple sunspots or a nice filament that's moving. That would be great. All right, let's go back up to 20 milliseconds and uh, 170 gain. And uh, continue uh, moving around the sun. See what else is happening. That's it for activity. Oh, no, we're going to talk too soon. All right. So that looks good. Let's see what's going on the uh, surface here 7.5 and back to 100 gain. Oh, 75. 7.5, big difference. Okay, nah. We 
we have this filament. Uh, this is not a sunspot. That's dirt on my sensor. Uh, this is a sunspot right there, but it's just not too remarkable. And this is dirt on my sensor. Dirt, dirt. Uh, well, they're on the quirk, or they're on the IR UV cut filter. They're not on the sensor. That's sensor dirt. When it's real defined, these are the dust bunnies that are elsewhere on the optical train. But I will take flats and I will uh, remove those when I do my imaging uh, processing. Okay, so here's what I've decided to do. I'm making up my mind here. First, I've got to pay attention. I forget I'm going live because I always talk to myself whether I'm live or not. Uh, do, 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 do what am I trying to do? Hang on a minute. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Uh, I wanted to make sure I had the comments up because I otherwise don't know if anybody's watching. All right, so we're going to do what here? Uh, let's switch telescopes very quickly. And I'm imaging with two telescopes, but not at, not at the very same time. I have to go back and forth from one to the other. <clears throat> because I only have one laptop connected. But I have two telescopes connected to the same laptop. If that makes sense. And so I want to kind of center this a little bit before I switch. And then let's uh, go up to cameras and let's move to the 1600. Okay, there is the sun taken with the Solar Scout and so we want to move north and kind of center it a little bit and we want to move east just a tad and uh, back again and let's kind of overexpose this too and see if what is if anything's going on the Sun surf rim that we can see yeah okay so these are the most active regions or areas of the sun's rim. And so I want to image primarily over here. There was something going on over there, and it's not. Let me see if I can bring this. Uh, yep. So we have those um, features of solar rim activity here, some flaring. Some flaring started there. But uh, the best we're going to get is going to be right here. So let's go take some pictures um, and process them and see what they look like. So I'm going to bring uh, this down to about 3.5. And I do this. Ooh, need to bring it up some. Let's say 5 milliseconds. Oh, no. That, uh, let's say eight milliseconds. Yep. Let's go ten milliseconds. That's fine. Um, but before I start taking pictures with the Solar Scout, <clears throat> I'm going to go uh, back to the other camera. I'm fighting allergies, so I beg your forgiveness for the choking, snorting, and coughing that. Uh, I'm doing here. Uh, let's move this thing uh, west somewhat. And uh, stop about, let's see, I'm going to bring up my crosshairs and get a reference. Let's bring it to about. Uh, I think I want to go up some. That's right, because the flaring is like right here. So let me put the crosshairs on that sunspot. And then let's overexpose this and see if I've got the flares in it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, looks good. All right, it's time to take a picture.
uh, want to make sure that I have a fairly decent histogram. It's kind of dark, so let's bring it up some. Let's go down and see it. Uh, still kind of dark, and I'm going to bring it up a little more. Don't worry about it blowing out. You'll see what I'm talking about. That's a little better. Uh, I can fix that by moving this uh, back. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's terrible. Okay, <clears throat> let me also, excuse me, <clears throat> let me also work with this focuser a bit. I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> uh, about 100%. <clears throat> and see if I can't get a better focus on that sunspot. Let's try going in. Let's come out a little bit. <clears throat> the scene is not real good. You see how the sun is flickering? That's just atmospheric uh, turbulence between my telescope and the, the sun. So we'll just have to fight that. All right, let's go back to auto resolution, or not resolution, uh, auto zoom. And let's take our first uh, picture. <clears throat> I want to make sure I've got the right hard drive set up. So we want to go to file names. And <clears throat> let's, um, I don't. And I want to go to this external SSD drive and make a new folder. This is going to be 423-23 solar. <coughs> and we want to apply this. So we have, uh, let's give this a name. <coughs> We're going to call this uh, AT because I'm using the AT. Uh, refractor and uh, <clears throat> and so it, it will create a folder to save these images and let's take a um, let's, let's do a quick capture let's take a <clears throat> 500 frame image and it's taking it almost a hundred frames per second and it's already done so now what I want to do is see what it looks like. Um, it may not even be worth processing because of the bad scene. I'm going to bring up Auto Stackert, and we're going to go to uh, the D drive, and we're going to go to 2423, <clears throat> and uh, I don't even have a flat frame, so. All of that's going to be in the image. I'll take some flats and remove the dust. But uh, here's okay. Let's go ahead and I have surface check, improve tracking, expand, Laplace, uh, noise robust, set it five, local, analyze. <clears throat> Let's take it a second or more. Slow laptop. Old laptop. Low and old laptop. I'm going to bring my stream deck over here so I can mute myself next. Let me find where the mute button is next time I start coughing. 
and, and then if you see me talking and you don't hear sound, send me a message that I'm still muted. That's what I forget to do. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm going to keep 50%. It's already set there of the uh, frames. There's 500 frames, so I'm going to keep 250. And the reason <clears throat> is that um, these this graph represents each of the individual frames in the AVI file. And at the 50% mark, half of them uh, are better than 50%. Actually, where it crosses over, probably 60% of the frames are better than or in the upper 50%. So it's been, they're all not good, but uh, we're going to go ahead and use them. So <clears throat> I need to place sample points. You can either click and place them. I'll just use a uh, an automatic <coughs> grid, <coughs> and then uh, I'll uh, go ahead and stack these. And while it's stacking, <coughs> I'm gonna go back and take another, put my, uh, and let's go ahead and take another quick capture. And this time we'll take a thousand frames, and <coughs> because the seeding's so bad. I'll take a thousand, and if I keep fifty percent, then I'll have more data to work with, and uh, and I'll probably won't keep fifty percent. I'll probably keep twenty percent or two hundred, <clears throat> but I'll have two hundred better frames in this bad scene. That's my logic, and it's probably wrong, but it's still my logic. Okay, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. now let's uh, go back to Auto Stacker. And uh, it's about to finish alignment. It takes the end stacking takes a while. Then everything else goes pretty quick. <clears throat> One of the bad, the bad feature of being live and processing is that everybody has to wait. When I'm doing uh, recorded videos, I can pause while processes drag out their time. Okay, now let's just go ahead and close it. If I know I've got a, <coughs> some good data, then uh, I won't do any more until I'm completely finished. Uh, let's bring up this image. I'm using IMPPG. That's my dog barking. Uh, you know what? I did have a. Uh, I do have some flats already taken from uh, the day before yesterday. I could have probably gotten rid of a lot of that. Uh, hang on a minute. Oh, wrong files. I need uh, <clears throat> this hang on. Okay. I'm losing my mind, guys. I was loading a process setting. I just want I just want this uh, flat. There's the frame. Ah, do it again. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> now we got it. Let's uh, move this down where we can see it. <clears throat> I'm going to process the whole thing at one time. I want this uh, anchor point put about there, and I'm going to raise this up to there. And let's see if we've got our prompts new. So let's bring this back in. And let's go up some. 
My dog's sitting at the window barking at our uh, beautiful day outside at everybody walking. <coughs> okay, let's raise convolution up to 2.4. <coughs> And then let's uh, do some sharpening a little bit. I don't like to use sharpening in IMPPG. I'd rather do that in PixInsight because I get weird artifacts. But I really just want to see. This isn't going to be finished. I just want to see if we got enough detail to make this worth my while. Okay, after it's colorized. It would be okay. I'm not really getting some good stuff on the. Yet I'm not getting some good stuff on the prom. So let me just kind of play around here. And A lot of people, a lot of processors, um, prefer prefer to do this and just use the, the inversion uh, option. And uh, I, I don't, because what will happen is the sunspot, which is black, will become white. So I'll reset this and show you when you use the inversion then you're going to get the um, um, the effect of uh, forgetting how to, to work these curves. Uh, yeah, a lot to learn when I do this. I haven't done this in so long. I forget how to, to manage these. these. Uh, I'm going to reset this and just do it the, one, I'm curious to see if I, oh, if I invert, and then uh, I bring this down, and I bring this up, and I go this way, if that'll work, yeah, that probably does. That's probably the way you're going to have to go on this. Uh, well, <clears throat> that's interesting. I end up actually with the same histogram. And essentially, do I have a better... I may have to invest a little more time in, uh, in version, but I do have the black of the... Uh, The sunspots as black as they are supposed to be, so I may have learned something in this. I don't worry about the edges, I can crop all that out. I'm just worried about, uh, I'm concerned about detail here and here because this will be cropped quite a bit <coughs> if I were going to keep this image. Okay, let's go back to our sun and. Uh, Go ahead and close out IMPPG and we're back. And uh, while I'm here, I want to take uh, gosh, the focus looks so bad. <coughs> Let me see if I can't improve on that. I need to, uh, adjust my histogram though to pull that off. I need to add contrast so that I can see focus. <clears throat> but the scene again is going to hurt us because it's just, uh, I don't know, we may have some wind outside, but the scene is just not really good right now, and that's what's happening. The uh, sun is just undulating and uh, in the atmosphere is just uh, very turbulent so and it the scene can be uh, 
ridiculously bad and then uh, 10 or 15 minutes later it can kind of settle down and uh, I found kind of just waiting around and taking your uh, shots your best shots is sometimes the only thing you can do um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and, and see if this focus it's just kind of hard to focus this thing it's just moving around so much and I think it's probably as good as it's going to get I guess I'll leave it alone all right back to auto zoom auto zoom just takes me back to the native uh, field of view and let's knock off another thousand I don't want to do a time much I don't have enough time in an hour and a half I'm gonna have a uh, transit and sometime this afternoon clouds are going to join us okay we just took a thousand I'm gonna take another thousand and then uh, I'm gonna move a little more north and stop about right there come down just a little bit so I can see those spots and Uh, knock off a thousand and as soon as I've done this I'm going to take uh, some flats and let's uh, do another one Then I'm going to head over to the other side where that other flare was, solar flare. And again, I pay no attention to the hot spots on the right. That's because I've juggled the histogram and I have light leak. Uh, from the uh, tilt of my uh, adapter. I'll just reset this and those will go away. And uh, my exposure is a little hot, so I'm going to drag that down a little bit to about 7.5. And I'm going to knock off a thousand here because I have a solar flare somewhere in this area, unless it's gone away. And I'm going to knock off another thousand. This is a pretty ridiculous uh, filament right here, too. Uh, so. some sunspots in there okay uh, now let's just reset that and let's go take some flats so I need to move west and center the Sun best I can and north the least north and that's about it. I'm now going to defocus. I can go in or out. I'll just go out a thousand frames. And I'm going to rename this AT flat because this I'll be taking a flat with the uh, Solar Scout, the other telescope. So let's just take 200 of these. We don't need many. A hundreds for plenty. 
and let's take another hundred. Okay, um, I said I wasn't going to do this, but let's go back to, well, let's uh, now focus back in. So I'm going to move the focus in a thousand steps. I did focus out. Yeah, there we go. And uh, so I'm going to move over to another more visual, visually active part. And so I need to go west. Use this hand controller. It's on eight times sidereal. And we'll take these two sunspots here. Let's go north sun. All right, let's uh, kind of settle everything down. Let's go ahead and apply our Another capture we're going to do uh, 2000 this time. And while we're doing that, we're going to bring up uh, a plane just went by at the bottom part. I don't know if you saw that. I have them screeching across the. I've got videos where the planes are uh, flying through my sun. Coming up in uh, ooh, about two months, I'll have a uh, ISS schedule to pass through the sun. They almost always end up being a disappointment. Uh, they, the route gets, it's not exact. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 we haven't done it yet. So let's, let's uh, first, let's open our calibration, our, uh, let's open our flat frame. So I need to go back this way to my root folder and AT flat. And I took, uh, oh, I forgot to change the name. And I took the last 2000 frame. So here's our flat over here. And uh, cut the size down so you can see all the dust. So here's the problem with this telescope. I've got vignetting in the upper right, and I've got a dust spot here, dust spots here, here. So it's loaded with uh, stuff. So what I'm going to do is after you open it, you don't really do anything other than go back to your image calibration and you create a master flat. And I'm going to find the root where this flat was made, and I'm going to save it here, and I'm going to call this AT for the Astrotech Tech Refractor. Uh, so we now have a flat. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open an image that I took. Well, why don't we just go ahead and open this 2000? It'll take a long, nah, it'll take too long to process. Let's go over to the uh, solar. Let's see if I got another upper right. I took a couple of those. Yeah, let's take uh, the last one I did. I know it's a thousand frames, so I have a thousand frames down here. And so you can see the stuff on my the, the sunspots I mean not sunspots the uh, you see the sunspots but you see the dirt so let's make that go away I'm going to go up to image calibration and that's right after I have loaded my uh, my AVI file of the sun and I'm going to click on load master flat it's going to take me right to it um, it's on the 23rd it's under the AT flat so it's taking me right to it and uh, voila, 
so it's gone. It left me with a hot spot up here. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, I'll be cropping that out anyway, or I'll be controlling it in post processing. But there's the uh, there's the sun uh, without the uh, dust that uh, we did flat out successfully. So we're going to analyze. And while it's analyzing, I'm going to go outside. Uh, when I say I'm going to go outside, I'm going to go back to the scopes, which are outside, and I'm going to switch telescopes. Um, I'm going to bring up the, uh, hang on a minute, bring up the uh, solar scout that has an ASI 1600 attached to it. And with that, I get the entire uh, disk, but I'm going to need to bring it up some north and east. Kind of get it centered, uh, get rid of this reticle. Let's bring it down. And let's go back and down. Let's go back up a little bit. And east. And down. Hard to center. Okay, <clears throat> so the difference between the ASI 1600 and the 174, besides pixel size uh, and overall uh, sensor <laughs> and big differences, is that I can get the entire disk in with the ASI 1600, but um, the frame rate is uh, a ridiculous 19 frames per second. So taking a thousand frames because auto stacker does such an outstanding job of stacking all of these individual frames as the sun moves around um, you don't need that many with this camera because of its resolution so I'm going to take 200 frames with the scout and they're larger files it takes longer to process in auto stacker so let's go check out auto stacker and see where we are okay it's time to add the samples it's already told me that this is a screwed up image so uh, don't pay any attention to this but i'm going to keep out of the thousand frames i'm going to keep uh 115 percent uh, or 150. now one of the things that shark cap allows you to do you could actually create as many as four folders. You could say, I want to keep 15%, and you could add, I want to also keep 20%, uh, 50%, or 80%, and try 100% and process if you want to do that. Uh, but I uh, have no desire to do that. Uh, you could also uh, be specific about how many frames you want to uh, work with so it's just whatever you prefer but I'm gonna go with 15% I never sharpen uh, it creates screwy stuff for me I don't drizzle the Sun or the moon I might drizzle smaller planets but uh, if I do it's never more than 1.5 times which is you're increasing the image size one point times at the expense of resolution because it's interpolating pixels uh, it gets it right sometimes. It doesn't get it right sometimes. But AutoSacker is pretty, pretty unique algorithm, and it does turn out some uh, nicely drizzled images. At this, also at the expense of size. And so when your image size increases, processing time slows to a crawl. When you have computers as old as my computers are. So, um, all right, we're done here. Let's do the grid. Uh, I'm going to use 104 points. It's at 98. Uh, I'm going to use 104 points. We don't need uh, those smaller point, sample points. All this means is that this box, I'll clear. If you pick 104, it will uh, place them around your, your target. But all that means is this box is 104 pixels by 104 pixels. Or in this case, 
it's 200 pixels by 200 pixels. So um, I'm going to use 104 just from experience. It seems to work fine. Place my grid. And then we're going to stack. And I'll have a new folder called uh, 15. And that's where this TIFF file uh, will reside. And as soon as it is uh, finished, we'll process it. So let's go back out to the Solar Scout and let's uh, check out my exposure. And uh, we're a little hot. Uh, I don't like to take images with the Scout with the exposure that hot. And I'm taking it 10 frames. Uh, exposure 10 milliseconds with zero gain. So I'm going to slow this down or lower this. Overlook me. I can't speak. Uh, that's good. That's where I want it right there. So I'm more interested in the hence histogram. I know I've blown out the sky. So I'm way, way over here with some clipping. What I don't want to blow out are any of my lighter Lumina, loom levels here and um, and I just found out processing the sun I'm much better off if I have about two-thirds of this histogram um, lit up so that's any more than that uh, I'm not happy with the processing so uh, we're going to recenter this a little bit so that we can see the the rim because I want to process the proms as well as process the surface of the sun so we need to go north a little bit and E too much and E now we gotta go south a little bit this is like a battleship this AVX mount it's hard to turn it but once you turn it you can't stop it this is backlash issues that's all it is you get it started and then it wants to run okay so we're going to take another 200 and I want to check something too real quick uh, but I want you have to wait to auto stock stackard stops before I can do that uh, let's take another while we're waiting, I'm sure it's still working. No, oh, it finished. So let's bring up IMPPG again. I don't want to say anything, but I've stopped sneezing, snorting, and coughing. Um, so let's uh, load and We want to go, let's just go back here. We want folder 15. And it's in the upper right, isn't it? Yeah, 15. So here's the most recent image. And so let's uh, see it. Okay. Now, the dirt's removed. We removed all the stuff from it. We got a little hot area up here. Pay no attention. We also have some. It's going to have to be clipped up here. So this thing's going to be cropped. Uh, not a lot, but I mean, I'll probably crop it in to here and down to create a good border up just a little bit, uh, but not much more than that. I'll colorize it either in Photoshop or in uh, PixInsight. So uh, what I want to do is uh, notice this histogram. Uh, it's as you as it, it is as you would think it is. It shows no clipping, so I don't have any data way off to the right. So I exposed it with the, the histogram. Most of the pixels are in the center, and that's that's where they should be. Now, uh, this is not though a good representation. It's only a representation really of this box, of what's in this box. So if I actually make it real small over that spot, then uh, it gives you a different uh, histogram. And if I make it over half sky, then you get the histogram I'm looking for. So this is the histogram I'm looking for. But in order to do that, 
uh, I just assume process the whole image. IMPPG gives you the option because this does take a lot of, uh, of horsepower on your computer and so that you can create a image uh, area and just add your processing tweaks and visualize it and then apply it to the whole image. It's kind of like you can, I think, in Registags. Um, but I'm going to select edit and process all at one time. So this box goes away. And now what I want to do is um, I want to bring and reveal the proms. Well, they're really solar flares. I, I've been, I didn't know that. Somebody corrected me. Uh, I don't know the difference between a I know what the sun is. I don't know the difference between a prominence and a solar flare. Uh, I thought I did, but I don't. So I was told. But I'm going to bring this up and reveal these pixels. And oh, hush, Charlie. And then I'm going to uh, bring this down some. And I'm my focus isn't on the sun. I'll work on that. My focus is on the rim and making sure that I have some kind of I have something revealed on the surface, whether it's a prom or a solar flare. And uh, I don't like the way this is going. Getting there though. And uh, this is what's puzzled me here. I like just a little bit of shadow here. Uh, but not a lot because that will show up kind of orangey and that's what I imagine is happening uh, although the sun's light is bright white uh, when I colorize it I like the effect of having uh, some kind of an orange haze on the rim of the sun but like that that looks good okay well you're kind of getting the idea now, I want to raise this up to 2.4 convolution. We're de running deconvolution, which is a form of sharpening. And let it do its thing. And then I'm going to raise the, uh, I am going to sharpen just somewhat, just really to see what I've got. Uh, I don't like to sharpen, I mentioned earlier. And IMPPG does some, it does okay on the surface, but on the rim sometimes it creates lines. You, you can't see them until you start uh, zooming in on them. And as you well know, if you put a picture up on Astrobin, everybody's going to zoom in on it. I'll zoom in on yours, or they're going to zoom in on mine. But I'm really trying to see if I can get some of that detail out here on this whatever it is, solar flare. And so with a crop, maybe even more serious crop than I mentioned earlier, like here and out here, maybe this could be turned into an image. Um, again, I think we're a victim of some really uh, not so good scenes. So it is what it is. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and just close this out. And uh, I'm going to bring up the uh, Scout. And you know, I didn't name that, did I? Uh, did I, did I? No, I don't think I did. I may have a hard time finding that one. Let's see. Uh, da, da. It would be in the upper center. Nope. Where is the Scout at? I know I took a, oh, they're with the flats. Okay, that's right. All right, so let me bring up a solar scout. 
image. And we're going to really have to uh, zoom, out, zoom in on this one. Okay. Um, I want to try to find a flat. I'm, I don't know if I have a, a flat saved. Uh, I don't know if I have one or not. I've taken them. Let me go back to the 20th. Uh, I've got a scout flat, but I just have the, oh, that's an AT flat. No, I did not make a master note. Okay, well, we're going to process this with all the crap on it. So, and it's got a mess on. Uh, this is all dust over here. It's just bad. All right, so let's go ahead and analyze. Again, it's not a planet. Uh, I'm going to use surface. Uh, as the major feature for adding stabilization. Uh, I don't want it to crop it because I want to save as much of the uh, border and rim because there may be some solar flares. So I don't want it cropping in an effort to stack it. I'd rather expand or add sky. So that's the reason. I am not sure what this means. I watched Emil uh, cry camp when he explained uh, sharp cap in a video that Woodland Hills sponsored. If you go to the Woodland Hills um, uh, astronomy shop videos, YouTube videos, they have a bunch of them. Uh, he does a presentation on sharp cap that everybody should watch that uses sharp cap. He explains a lot of things that uh, it's about a four year old video, but it's well worth watching. Because nothing's changed with Sharp Cap. Although he promised when he did this that a new uh, edition of Sharp Cap was going to be released after Christmas. This was like Thanksgiving. Uh, Emil, I love you for doing this so software. It's awesome. I'm not complaining. Not Sharp Cap, I mean uh, Auto Stacker. But uh, if I said Sharp Cap while ago, I meant Auto Stacker. Okay, uh, so let's analyze this. And while we're analyzing, let's go back into the, the view of our sun. And uh, we're just going to take a look at it. I'm going to shut up and stop sneezing, snorting, sniffling, and uh, whatever else I'm doing. So it's, actually, let's go change cameras and go to the ISA, ASI 174 camera. And... Uh, Why don't uh, we put this exposure down a little bit, pull this down. And I'm going to change this to uh, four times sidereal. By the way, uh, if you're new at doing this, uh, you can, uh, with sharp cap, uh, you can add your mount, uh, you can add your focuser to the uh, capture package and what it will do, it will create, now if you have a Celestron, it creates this hand controller, virtual hand controller. Uh, if you have EQ mode, in, uh, which I do for my two Atlas Pros that are outside, then you have uh, the EQ mode hand controller that you can use. But uh, it also creates its own Celestron driver uh, control feature here and you can change the, uh, the speed 
as well as I have my Moonlight uh, focuser uh, for the uh, Astrotech only. The uh, Solar Scout uses a helical focuser, and so that's manual, and I have to go outside and tinker with that. I also have to go outside in order to take my uh, solar flats, and uh, that's what you got to do. Uh, let's see. So what we're going to do is, while that's processing, I'm just going to hush up and hang on a minute. I know I have some dream music up here located somewhere. And that's better than me. I think.
had to mute myself because my dog was just parking his head off. The scene really is just not a good, not good. It's still fun. I really enjoy it. I'm wondering what's really happening up there. What I love about imaging the sun is um, it's always changing. Nebula, galaxies, if there's changes, there's so light. Uh, I don't notice them. I don't know what I'm looking at most of the time. But the, uh, and the same thing with the moon. planets, you do get the benefit of the little moons on planets like Saturn and Jupiter and the great red spot, but those are so predictable that uh, unlike the sun, there isn't anything predictable about the sun. I can be imaging it right now and a flare pop up that uh, shows up that I didn't see coming. When you do time lapses, it's so cool to be able to watch these filaments move like little worms. There's a lot of actual plasma movement going on, but these frames are, one, you know, they're so fast that you have to put them together in a time lapse to actually see the uh, movement and at 146 frames per second each of those separate little images you just it just stops action so you really don't see the fluid nature of the plasma that uh, work this way in the chromosphere and pretty sharp stuff cool stuff Right now, nothing but fun. Let's we'll see if the count's close to being done. Okay, so we can close this out and bring up IMPPG okay we need find it it's in the flats in the uh, HD flat that gotta remember to do my naming okay Now, this is a large file, and this is a file that it would probably be wise for me just to use a little bit at a time to process, but I'm not. I'm going to go up here and select Do All, and so bring over our histogram. an anchor point and drag this up oh yeah
Corona. Pretty cool. Ah, getting close. All right, let's bring this up to about 4.0. Not 2.4, but about 4.0. And that's good. And it's applying it. It takes it a while down here. You see the... Okay. And let's bring up uh, Sigma on this one to maybe 1.6 by 1.5. Let's bring this up to about 1.4 and let it get a chance, chance to work. Oh yeah, looking pretty cool. Uh, a little bit too bright. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a good image. This needs to be uh, removed. But it shows uh, some of the prom activity or the solar flaring all around the rim. And uh, may need a little more work on this curve. Probably somehow know to bring this in some. Ah, screwing it up again. Uh, but anyway, you got the idea. So I'm not saving it. Quit. And I think that's going to pretty much wrap this up. I have a uh, transit to be happening. It could have happened at, it'll happen at 1 30. So I got an hour. But it's getting close. And I'm hungry. So, guys. I want to wish everybody an absolutely wonderful rest of your day and a great week. I hope you have some clear skies and uh, God bless everybody.